Okie dokie. Well, welcome everybody to our uh, most recent Ask Me Anything. This is in the series of Women Lead Online Forums. And today we're going to be talking with our resident expert, Lori Campbell, about CRM solutions, uh, what's overkill, what's underkill, uh, how do we know what to use, what's the best one that we, we could pick. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about Lori first. Um, Lori's company is called LAC Solutions, and she's an independent solutions consultant and planning and management specialist. She has years of experience in software and database solutions, as well as project and event planning. And I, you know, I have to tell you guys, I work with Lori pretty closely as part of the CWI team, and I can vouch for all of those skills that she has as far as being a planner and being really good in the database and, and so forth. So I think we're in for a treat today. I think she's got a lot that she can share with us, and, uh, and we're going to all walk away knowing a little bit more than we did when we first started. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Lori. So the, the floor is yours. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to start by talking a, around some of the questions I typically get around CRM solutions. So I think it's confusing through the years because in the beginning, there were sales and marketing solutions, and then there was a CRM solution, and those were completely separate. Mm -hmm. And I think the history of that was, you know, when companies started um, having sales, you know, having support organizations or support uh, groups within their company. And then multiple people were talking to a, the client. So, you know, we all understand that when we call one of our, you know, the phone company or someone else to get support and we talk to one person and then they transfer. So we have to repeat everything we said and they have no knowledge of what previous conversations and previous uh, communications then that was kind of the whole idea behind CRM to make your customer manage your relationship in, in the sense of managing your communication with the customer, especially when you had multiple teams within your company talking to the customer. And, and so, Lori, can you, what does CRM actually stand for? It stands for customer relationship management. Okay, good. Okay. So now um, you will see that term used more more across the board. So instead of, it used to be SFA, Salesforce Automation, was a different set of software type. And, now, and then there were marketing software tools. But now, if you look at it, it's all got the word CRM or the acronym CRM in there. So it's, it's kind of all been lumped together where you'll see, um, for instance, with CWI, we use ACT. ACT used to be a sales solution. Now, if you look at their website, they're calling themselves a CRM solution. So everybody's kind of um, changing the way they look at it. Salesforce is another example. That's one of the big ones. And they used to be managed, uh, uh, built around managing your sales leads, your sales team, and getting, getting you reports on what, what leads were the best to follow up on and things like that. So it was all about the sales cycle, but then it stopped there. So once you got that customer and they became a true customer of yours, there was no ability to manage your communication and, and maybe even like projects and things like that. So now everybody is calling themselves um, either a sales and CRM or marketing and CRM. So you'll see that term. And um, I'm going to say, when you start looking at a solution, you want to make sure you know what you, what's important to you um, and what you want to do with it and make sure the software has what you need. So if you have a big sales team of people and you want to track your sales team, you want lots of sales reports and all that, you want a solution. Even if it's called a CRM solution, you want to make sure it has those capabilities for reporting and tracking and keeping track of your sales team. If you're a smaller company, and I'm going to focus more on a smaller company, um, and that's really more what I do. And when I was with IBM, I worked on big, huge ERP systems and ERP systems are enterprise resource planning. They had components that built up this big CRM. So SAP, if you've heard of that, is a big ERP 
system. They have components in an SAP that handle every part of your business, and some of it is sales and CRM, and, and some of it is order processing, and some of it, you know, so it's all those pieces together. Um, when you start looking at solutions, so I'm a, a couple examples that I had with clients were if you're uh, a solopreneur or a, a two person office, and there's only two of you you know, really interacting with the client, you might say, well, do I really need this? So you probably still do. Maybe it's because you both want to be able to get into the system and put your notes about your communications, assuming you both talk to the same client. Not only do you want to know when you're in the sales process, what conversations you've had, what pushback you've had, what the next steps are, you still want it all in one place so that you are not repeating your communication with your other teammate. Even if you're a solopreneur, so one of, some of my clients that have been interested in it are really just tracking your clients and reminding you when you need to follow up with them. So I have a, a one in particular that I'm thinking of that is they, they do like um, with web, website development. And they just did an update for this client. So it's managing long-term clients. So really, if you're in a business where it's one sale and done, maybe you don't need the CRM piece of it as much as you need the sales piece of it. But if you're a sales uh, or a, a company that does, you know, follow-up business with customers. So you, you do a job for them and you hope that they'll call you back to do the refresh or to do follow-on jobs or different jobs. So you want to maintain that relationship over time. Mm -hmm. So this particular example is a client that is a solopreneur, but when they did an update for a client, a lot of the information on the client becomes, on the client's website, becomes old after say six months or a year. So once they implement that and they're kind of done with that project, they want a reminder in the system to say, okay, in six months or, Five months or whatever time period you defi define, you want to make sure you follow up with that cl client. And in six months, you might have so many other clients that you can't remember what you did for them or what uh, your communication has been with them. So it's a really good idea to have that in a system. And, and you also want it in a system that you can retrieve it from wherever you're at as soon as you're a, a mobile person. So those are the there are many pieces of these solutions that you want to look at based on how you do business and decide, you know, it's like you, you get so tired of consulting telling you, well, it depends. Well, it does, right? <laughs> but just to go back a little bit to the main like topic or the sentence that we had as the title for this is, do I need it? Can I afford it? Is it something I should do? I think if you're really good at keeping notes in whatever form you do, in spreadsheets, in documents somewhere, and you keep it on a, a common location, you, uh, you maybe could still get away with not doing it. But there are solutions out there that are very affordable. There are some that are um, free for a certain amount of time, some that are free over a long period of time if you only have one or two users. And some are limited by number of contacts you put in. Some are unlimited space. Some are just space, you know. So there's different variables, but there are a bunch of them that are rated quite highly. And I can, if you're interested, I can point you to some articles that are uh, up to date, 2019, what's the best CRM solutions for small businesses and why, and they're really, it's really good information. It makes you think about how you do business and whether you, you need, or in the future, you want to start thinking about those things. So, um, but many of them, you can download their software for free. You can try it out for free. It doesn't cost you anything but your time. And we know that's very important, your time, <laughs> right? Well, I think so, just the idea behind, you know, automating, how often you touch that customer and how you keep in touch with them is is just a, a no-brainer somehow because I know that um, I 
can't remember anything, you know, <laughs> from day to day. So I sometimes completely forget that I've had a communication with somebody and then, you know, it'll pop up on my radar or in a calendar reminder or something like that. So um, yeah. I, I can't rely on my ability to remember. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We all, we're all getting there for sure. And, and if you have a lot of clients, it's hard. They run together. You know, they, especially if you're doing similar things for multiple clients, they really do conversations tend to kind of, kind of run together. And of course, with any software system, it's only as good as your input into it. So that's, you know, really a key thing is if you're going to do it. And that's what I, I, I will help make a plan many times with how, you know, how to approach the implementation, how to start with your little trial and how to um, make sure you make yourself, you, you know, use it. I mean, don't, you know, even if you say, well, it's free, you know, what, what I hate would, would be if you download it for free and you say, oh, I'm going to try it, but then, oh, I'm not paying for it. So it's not that important. But if you're going to do it, you know, really commit to doing it. Um, and another, a couple of the other variables. So if what I do most of the time is I'll sit down with a client for maybe an hour or two and say, okay, what are, how are you doing business now? How do you want to do business in the future? What's, what do you plan that's new? Um, and then kind of create a requirements document. So you might say to yourself, well, I'm, I'm a small business. I don't need that. But you always do. You should put down what your requirements are uh, for whatever you're going to do and to, to, to document it and you know, agree, agree upon it. You see it in writing and you go, yep you know, that's, that's true for me right now. And, and in the not so near, you know, not, not so distant future. So I helped define the requirements. Like I said, I had a client that didn't do any sales. They were just word of mouth and referrals. So they didn't care about the sales piece of it and all the reporting and all that kind of stuff. So you don't want to get a sales force type of solution where it's very robust in that area for somebody like that. But they were more about the follow-up and the integration with what they do do. So you also have to look at the platform that you operate on, make sure it's supported on that platform. It integrates with whatever your key pieces are. Like if you use Outlook Suite quite a bit or the Google Suite quite, quite a bit, you want to make sure it integrates mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had another client that did a lot of social media. There are some solutions that are really tied in well with social media. That is not there. Are, those are kind of few and far between. So if that's a big requirement requirement of yours, it's going to direct you towards a very specific set of, of possibilities. Mm -hmm. So usually what I do is, like I said, I help define your requirements and then say, okay, what's the importance of this? And then I would come back with like a recommendation of the top three and why mm -hmm. that would fit your requirements and why. And of course, budget is a big piece of that, sure. but um, you can, you know, I can send anyone that wants to email me, I can send you these articles that kind of really tell you how like PC magazine or small business uh, groups have rated these software mm -hmm. uh, products. So, and it gives you some thought about, you know, what's important to you. You know, how do you do business? Do you do a lot of sales? Do you want to track that? Uh, another client of mine was more important. She was out on the road a lot. So she needed a mobile, mobile capability. She wanted to be able to do project management. So she, mm -hmm. what she did for a client was over the, the, what she sold was over time and it was a true project. She wanted to be able to tie project documents to each client, each contact within her system and be able to pull that up on her phone wherever she was, you know, so whether it be with a, a tablet or a phone. So that was a key a key capability and there are you'll see if you look at these articles but I can tell you there are very few that for free have the project management capability so that's where you see you know some of them the free version is very basic and then you get the add-on functionality as you as you need certain things right. You know, years ago, um, I worked in software development and uh, in project management specifically in some business applications development. And I actually implemented three different uh, CRM solutions. And they were um, at, you know, very inside, they were large, you know, for the most yeah. part. But um, one thing I learned from a, a consultant that we had working with us that I, I never forgot 
and he said, always follow the USA model, understand, simplify, automate. And I thought, you know, we, we would go through and try to automate these ridiculous workflows, you know, that didn't even pertain, you know, maybe they had come about because of, of a bad system, you know, or band-aids mm -hmm. that they had put in. And so when you really got down to, like you said, what's the requirement? What is it you, you want to do, you know, begin with the end in mind and, and then design from there. That was, that was very helpful for me. Yes. And I think that's a, that brings up a good point that I think um, if you're going to truly um, commit to implementing some of these things, some of the solutions are rated on how customizable they are. But really, I feel that you need to go into it willing to change the way you do things to fit the software. Because the more you customize, the harder it is to maintain over time and all that. And like you said, Patty, if maybe you're doing things a certain way, that's not the best way to do it necessarily, but that's how you're doing it. And you can, because that, you know, it's not, maybe not the best process. So I think you should be open to considering doing things that fit the model that whatever your software choice has done. But it's a key thing to know how you do business and if it fits and how much customization you need to do, because that's a, a cost variable as well. Sure. I know I used to do, I had one of my jobs <clears throat> was for Toyota and I had to um, help them pick a, um, uh, uh, do an assessment of an order processing system. But they had done things the same way for ever and they were not willing to change the way they did business and the completely opposite to the flow of the software. Mm -hmm. But they, I mean, it was a nightmare. It was a terrible project because you, the end users are saying, no, that's not how we do things and we're not willing to change how we do things. So, it's really important if you're going to implement, and there's a lot of value in doing that too, mm -hmm. because like you said, you're looking at processes that maybe aren't the best way to, to approach things. Right. So, mm -hmm. so uh, some of the other variables are, you know, of course, price and, you know, functionality, customization, um, support. So if you're, um, that's one of the things that really popped out to me. Some of these companies don't offer good support. So if that's important to you, if you, if you have a, a, a set of users or it's just you and you really feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty smart, logical, I can figure this out. Maybe that support piece of it is not as important to you. But if you're, you know, kind of the opposite to that, <laughs> then that's another thing to look at very carefully. Like I want to make sure, even if you're paying, like, like I said, the, the, there's a lot of free entry level, but the next level up might be $12 a month or $25 a month per user. That's kind of a ballpark number and they're all different, but that's a good number to think about. And you think, well, 12, $12 a month's not that much. And, and, uh, and that's true, but um, still, if that $12 a month doesn't give you any support and you know you're, you really need more handholding and help, then you're going to have to, you know, pay the next level up um, that they offer that gives you the support mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. need, you know, and then you can also get in at the entry level and then decide with support. Right. It's pretty, pretty key there too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, let me see what else. Do you have any, any specific questions, Bosky, or? I don't know if Linda's even on here, but. I think Linda's on her phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. One question, question I had was, and I don't know if it's still considered CRM, I think we kind of talked about a little bit, is um, the thing we're looking at is more of the um, database so that we can do email marketing. Yeah. So that kind of speaking to that social media. So like MailChimp is a yes. that we're trying to work with. So. Um, you know, because I'm in and out of the office and I, I kind of want something to work for me while I'm not here able to do the research or not research to reach out to customers. Mm -hmm. Right. I want, I want our, our sales, um, I want, I want a software to be the sales team getting out there and getting our work, you know. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, and there, there's a variation with the software. Some have, um, have the email marketing right in as a module and it's done within their software. Some of them 
and many of them integrate with a male chimp or a constant contact or some, and that's where you would, you know, you could set the reminders and set all the variables and then it would link in with male chimp or, or um, constant contact if, if it doesn't have it within the software, but that's a, a variable that if you're already paying, you're already signed up for MailChimp, then that's not an additional cost for you, but you just want to pick a solution that integrates well with MailChimp or whatever your chosen. Um, and that's true with calendaring and that's true with email, you know, just one-on-one -on -one email. So if you basically use, you know, Outlook, let's say, Right. For both your calendaring and your email, then you want to make sure your solution integrates with both of those. And of course, many of them do, but not all of them do. So more and more are uh, kind of tied to the G Suite, the Google uh, solutions as well. So it's very important to, as part of the requirements to look at what you're already paying for or what you're already you know, committed to and you're not willing to change that it has to integrate, it has to integrate with those things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just trying to kind of understand, you kind of were saying CRM is kind of a general term, but is, you know, so does MailChimp provide us the ability to be able to manage as well as to be able to do email marketing? Um, mm, that's a good question. I, it, it, to some extent, okay. but maybe not in a smart way. Okay. Like you, you know, um, you likely have to flag it as to who you want to email to and you know you have to tell it where the crm integration might you would be able to flag the contacts for certain types of of activities and things like that so there might be a, a smarter way to have the system do things for you rather than you tell mailchimp here's my distribution list send this you know out on this time frame and that kind of thing Okay. I'm seeing. Yeah, Linda's got a couple of questions. <laughs> yeah, so, she was in my glasses on. I saw text pop up. I'm like, okay, yeah. what is that? Uh, so, so one is is kind of along what um, Vasi was saying is um, automated drip marketing. You know, so what are some solutions that are out there for for automating that? Yeah. Um, I, I don't, off the top of my head, know um, other than the, the, the key ones, you know, that we, we know about. Um, I can certainly do some research into how they do those things individually versus integration with a CRM or a sales solution that would tell it to go do it. I don't, I can't answer that off the top of my head. Yeah, if it's if it's just drip marketing standalone, I mean, I used to use Constant Contact, right? You know, and and they they had some pretty amazing templates you could set up. You know, not just a newsletter, but also sales flyers and um, you know special bonuses and things like that that you could set up on a calendar and um, and send them out. And you could categorize, like you were saying, Lori. You know, flag your your contacts to this group you know this is all women this is all women in southern california this is you know whatever you know you were tracking for right so yeah so you would have to cat i mean uh, i also used uh, when i had my event planning business use constant contact mm -hmm. and you did have to load those contacts into constant back then it's been a while but you had to load the contacts into constant contacts and yes. then flag them for yeah. the different like you said, for the different mm -hmm. activities. What you wouldn't want to do is have that have to do that work in in MailChimp or Constant Contact, and then and somewhere do else. it also in the CRM solution for other purposes, right? Right. So you would want to make sure that what what you do in CRM you it is flagged so that you just send it over, you know, that it goes over to Constant Contact or MailChimp and it happens. Yeah. And you don't have to recategorize everything in a way that they, that software understands it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty limited. I mean, it was, it was powerful, but it was limited to what it did, you know, in that you could see, um, you know, like Tavasi's question about like using MailChimp or something for a CRM because it's got how many times you've touched that customer and it's got certain amounts of fields, but not as much as 
you would probably have in a in what's truly a CRM, you know, like Remedy or Act or um, Salesforce or some of those. Right, yeah. right. And it would be, yeah, it would be more of a general categorization that would be, okay, like you said, all mm -hmm. f female business owners of this type of business. Right. You know, where in, in the um, CRM system, you would, you know, you could actually in your communication with this client, you can say, okay, I need to send them something in so, so much time and the system would automatically, you know, kind of handle that and maybe with a bunch of other people send it over if it's a, ma a MailChimp or, or constant mm -hmm. contact type of email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Linda also asked about um, in-depth client follow-up. So it would have some high-level project management in it. Um, does that does that ring a bell with you? Any solutions like that? Yeah, there's one in particular that's rated really high on the project management uh, piece of things, and it's called Insightly. Um, there's the, the, every year it seems like the ratings of uh, there's new players in the field, and the the um, ratings of all the different uh, like I said, PC Magazine, uh, small business. Uh, all these different things, they, they all seem to have the same ones at the top, more or less, and they rate them by, like I said, usability, customization, support, all these different variables. But overall, uh, Zoho is a top, is one of the top ones that I, I see, uh, but they don't really have the project management capability that, uh, but a lot of them don't, right? Mm -hmm. And some of them, like, uh, I know some people that have already, like, paid for Salesforce. So Salesforce becomes very expensive. And I think for a small business, it can get uh, too cumbersome uh, cost. Because what happens with Salesforce is you start off with, used to be you start off with one module and you every functionality that you needed, you had to add on. Now I think it's changed a little bit, so they don't really have as much of a low-end startup position as they they used to but i could be wrong about that mm -hmm. but that that project management type of capability is is one of the really higher up costs right mm -hmm. and that's definitely though for those of us that depending on your type of business you 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 want that you want it to be able to help you through a, a project and the cycles of the project and remind you when things are due and when you're you know overall even if it's a a sales pro process of mm -hmm. looking at it as a project. Right. But um, so that's a key capability, I think, for a true um, CRM that is about your managing your communication and retaining existing clients. Mm -hmm. It's a lot different than a sales uh, solution that would help you sell, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's maintaining and, and all that. So um, anyway, Insightly is one that I know that has that, that project management capability. It also has a mobile solution, and it's more affordable than some of the other ones. So that's one I would probably, if, if someone said to me um, that I need that capability, I would look at that one and say, okay, let's look at all your other requirements and see from a budget perspective, is this, is this a a good solution for you. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's the only one that has project capability. There are yeah. others. And some that integrate with outside project management tools, which I think is a lot more work, but it's also a doable thing if you already use a certain project management tool. And sometimes it might not be project management as much as it is a workflow, right? Yeah. You know, that you set exactly. up that I do this and then I do this and I do this and then yeah finished yeah so. and there there are yes I, that's a good point patty and there are uh ones that you will see that say they have the workflow capability a lot of them do yeah. um I, and i guess maybe the project management from the prospect from the view of having access to your project documents uh by going into that contact and, and you know and and pulling up all the documents pertinent to that client and the project mm -hmm that's a bigger capability that is probably more of the project management and less of just the workflow. Right. Yeah. Good. Bossy, do you have any other questions? Um, I don't, I don't. I just, I would be interested in the, um, the articles that you're mentioning. Okay. Kind of yeah. Just, 
Yeah. And you have my email, so you can, you can just shoot me. Um, and I'll be happy to send you all those links. And um, the other thing I was going to talk about just briefly, one of the thing, one of the things that I also do um, is promotional products. Um, so from a customer relationship standpoint, if you have events, if you go to conferences, if you, um, you know, go to speak somewhere, it's always nice to have little gifts to give to the people that you're seeing, especially if it's in a, a, you know, teaching a class or doing a presentation at a conference or something like that. It's always good to have little giveaways. One of the things I, I like to tell people is, especially if you're um, rebranding, if you're going through a rebranding, make sure that if, if your vision is that you're going to do more of that kind of stuff, don't create um, a logo or a branding with a ton of different colors because every time you print on whatever your little giveaways are if you want to do full color you pay for every color right so you're increasing your cost but if you're going to do a colorful logo also make sure work with your um, graphic designer to create something that looks okay in white or black as well as the multicolored version so on your printed material you like all the colors but if you're going to imprint something you want your logo you want to be able to do a one color or a two color run that will be a more affordable and will still show your logo and you know all that kind of stuff so that's um i've talked to some of my friends that are our graphic designers and i say you know if you're if you're helping someone rebrand then find out if they're planning to do that kind of stuff because then uh, you know you want to give them multiple versions of their logo that is easily printable for their promotional products as well as um, being um, looking okay without all the colors in there and then giving the, like if you pay someone to create a logo for you create um, marketing material make sure you get the full color image versions of those files that they create for you because that's what you'll give to somebody like me to get some promotional products printed with your with your logo on it right. but I also do uh, I want to I want to just tell a story about the promotional products I also do promotional products for some uh, financial advisors that give their their clients gifts at Christmas time and so forth and uh, that's a really nice thing and I I have I personally uh, feel like you know when I get that from someone especially at a certain at my birthday or at my anniversary or when I have a, a key event in my life, you know, that makes me think of that person. And that's another customer retention kind of activity that that is a good thing to think about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I uh, have seen some CRM solutions that integrate that gifting piece, yeah. you know, with it so that it reminds you that this is their anniversary with you or it's their yes. birthday or their what have you, you know, and you can, you can buy something and send it to them. Um, right. And I think that's just nice. It's just multiple ways of touching that customer and staying in touch with them. Yeah. Yeah. Re even, you know, everything you hear about, you know, in people that talk about sales and, and just customer relationship and communication, just sending a handwritten card is like still, uh, in this electronic world, it's still a wonderful thing for, for those of us that receive it and go, Oh, that, that, yeah. was, really that was really nice. Yeah. yeah really, mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah. yeah. So well, how about, um, what are some mistakes maybe that you've had customers make when they were looking to implement a CRM or not implementing it, you know, deciding against it? What are, what are some common mistakes? Well, yeah, one, uh, the first one would be, you know, committing to it and then not doing it, right? I mean, it, you know, and that happens in any kind of software purchase. So many people do that and they buy it or they make the decision. And especially, like I said, if it's free or inexpensive, oh, it's then not important and it becomes a lower, you know, lower burner kind of activity. So um, it's, if you don't, you know, even with our team, um, the, what we do with ACT is, you know, it, we enter notes on the records every time we talk to a client, uh, customer. If, if we didn't do that, then the system 
can't help us to know what all the communication. So it, so any system is tied, any CRM system especially, is tied to you actually using it in the way it's intended to be used. So if, you know, if I'm talking to a, someone and the last person that talked to him didn't put any notes in, I, I might end up, you know, asking them the same questions and going through and, and, and annoying them because they'll say, oh, I just told so-and-so that, right? So from a basic CRM and support of a customer's perspective, if you don't enter that stuff, you're too busy to do it, then you kind of defeating the purpose of yeah. this altogether. Yeah. And if you don't, like you said, if, if I had one client that took you can typically, let, let's say you keep your clients in Outlook, in contacts, or in a spreadsheet, or wherever you're getting it from. Most systems allow you to download the contacts into a spreadsheet and then upload them into these, other, these new systems. So that's what you would want to do is find out, you know, wherever that information is now, you know, load it into a spreadsheet and then load it most of these systems have that capability, right? So you, then you import it into the, the new system. I had one client that uh, took their whole, you know, their whole database where um, they did a lot of work on this, but most of them were old records and there was no activity on them and no real good uh, assessment. You like, you know, like they had like a time frame of, but they, they loaded in all these old clients and uh, they weren't able to really assess what the system was doing for them because these were old, dead um, clients kind of thing. So right. you know, I think it, it's be smarter about if you're really doing it just with software, like don't, don't do all this time and effort into loading in every contact if, if you know there's a, a really old set of clients that you're not ever going to follow up with or communicate with. Well, that kind of goes back to what you said at the beginning is, you know, know the requirements up front too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the requirements is, mm -hmm. you know, not only defining what's a good, you know, what you need and how you do business, but how are you going to do this assessment yeah. to determine whether this is the right, you know, this software is going to work for you. Yeah. And um, so that's another example. And another one was uh, again, and I talked about that, the support, you know, that um, people would get frustrated with the, the lack of support from the software vendor. Yeah. And nowadays, with everything being online, I mean, I have the same frustrations. You know, you, you, your first level of support is to go out and look at their frequently asked questions. Right. And, you know, it takes you, it's, t it's frustrating, but, mm -hmm. you know, kind of you get what you pay for. And if in, and I'm the same way, I'm a small business, so I have to manage my budget. And I, you know, I will try and figure everything out for myself, but that's me, you know, but you know, it is, it's a cost. Yeah. So um, I, I think going into it um, and I help with that, but if you're going to do it on your own, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't because you can uh, certainly, but be aware of what you, what you think you'll want and what the additional costs will be. So don't, you know, think, well, I have this budget and $12 a month is, is affordable for me. So that's where I'm going to stay. Well, okay, that's great. But, you know, here's what you don't have. And here's where it might benefit you to go up a little bit in the future, you know? Right, right. So um, Linda also posted a question um, asking if you have a master list of considerations, features, and requirements that someone can look at. Yeah, kind of gives I them do. a place yeah. of starting. Yeah. And yeah. Lori, where where should people email you? Um, okay, it's going to be my Lori at LoriAcampbell.com. Okay. So Lori, it's Lori L O R I E <laughs> at L O R I E A Campbell.com. Okay. Good, yeah. good. You know, I, uh, you're so right to say that um, you have to know what you, what you want and you also have to put in the time to get something set up correctly. Right. Uh, I, a number of years ago, I worked for a company, a consulting company that implemented help desk systems. And I was on site at a company in Dallas and 
they were just, oh, they hated the system. It was terrible. It didn't do anything. And they actually had the Cadillac of all help desk systems. I mean, they, the top of the line, the best you could buy. And, and it took me a long time to convince them there's nothing wrong with this system. It's the way you've implemented it. It's yes. your processes. It's, you know, it's some of the staff, it's all, you know, all of these different things. And they would have taken this, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of software and just thrown it out, brought something else in and failed again. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I had that was another example I was going to talk about that of uh, uh, one. Uh, this wasn't a client of mine, but one that I ran into uh, that was looking at, it. and she had like this big vision for her company. So she went and signed up for the full version of Salesforce. Yeah. Like you buy and you get the whole thing, and they were running some kind of special. So I'm sure they sold her on this. This you know really well. But it was, I want to say, three fifty or four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. for this software. But it, it had so much capability that she didn't plan to use most of it until five years down the road, or you know, quite a bit into the future. But they had sold her on this deal, right? So, but what happened over time? Like, okay, well, in a year, she's been paying, you know, three fifty a month and not using it, really not using it because she wasn't where she. Uh, had visioned her company to be in a year mm -hmm. and then another year, you know, so she's been paying all this and then she looks at that cost and goes, Oh, I'm going to get rid of that because it's a big cost and I'm not really using it. Well, you know, maybe if you hadn't signed up for that big bulky thing in the beginning, you could, you know, so I really feel like with a, with a smaller business um, that signing up for the, the minimum or a, what you know you need right now is a starting point, knowing that what you need down the road is an add-on that you can add later. So you do need to look at a solution that has that capability, but you know, paying that up front and only using a small piece of the capability is very uh, painful. It's yeah. painful, right? When you start looking at your budget and things yeah. like that. And we all have a vision um, for our company for our business and many times it changes, you know, that vision changes and um, maybe it takes longer or you get there faster either way, but you want a solution that you can, you know, build on as you need it rather than, you know, big cost up front. Right. I think as from a small business perspective, it's completely different for, a, you know, enterprise size business, of course. Great. Well, any other questions from our esteemed audience here today? <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Really good. Is it? Good. I'm glad. There's, there's always a lot to think about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, uh, yeah. It's, and it's not unique to any other type of software, but I think the key and, and the, the, like I said in the beginning, the biggest thing is people don't know what CRM is. They don't know what that means. And now it's become a grayer area because of the fact that now all these systems that used to be sales solutions or Salesforce systems are now calling themselves CRM and they may or may not have the true, you know, existing client relationship capability within their solution. And uh, like I said, the, the, the question I get the most from people is well, what is it, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, do you need it? Sure you do. I mean, if you want to manage your clients, can you do it the way you have been doing it? If you're a one person, sure, you probably can, you know, but it's worth looking at for the cost to see what the system can automate for you and save you some time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> time is valuable. <laughs> Pardon me? Time is very valuable. Oh, yes. So valuable. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been really, really great, Lori. I put your email in the chat there for everybody to see. It's Lori at LoriAcampbell.com. <laughs> and yeah, check the spelling, make sure I've got it right. <laughs> uh, but this has been very good information for, for all of us, you know, for anybody thinking of, of ways to improve their relationship with their customers, stay in touch with their, their customers, um, make life simpler for them. Uh, and uh, and all of that and everything that goes into it because time is money our time is valuable uh, it needs to be 
uh, as much a part of the equation as the budget and the size of it and, and what your actual goal is. So thanks for taking us through the very beginning you know, what is it you want to do? What are your requirements? And then right. um, all the way through to the, the end and how do we build those relationships? Any last thoughts? I think, you know, uh, um, I, I do, ha I have had clients that um, don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's kind of a neat place to be though. I mean, you can, you can implement something and kind of build around that too. So that's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's okay to say to me, I don't know what I need or what I want, because then we can start looking at some highly rated solutions and then you can start running your business around the way that those solutions are built, which is not a bad thing, yes. you know, yeah. and you can get into it for free initially or for as low as, you know, 12 or 20 bucks a month or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I liked what, what Linda said about having a, a starting place, you know, just some basic requirements that you need to think of because yeah. you, you don't know what you don't know. Right. right, exactly. And many of us have multiple businesses. So that's even that that becomes even more, you know, of a de definition, like, can you find a solution that will work for both of your businesses, right, or whatever. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you again so much, Lori. This has been really good. It's been a, a nice use of our time. And I want to thank all of you that joined us online, as well as those that will be listening to the recording of this um, online afterwards. And just be watching our social media feed for Connected Women of Influence. We've got these online forums coming up like almost every week. Uh, or every other week, there's something for everybody. So uh, I'm Patty Vargas. It's my pleasure to serve you as the as part of the Connected Women of Influence team. And I look forward to the next time that we're all together. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you, Patty. Bye. Bye. Bye.